This build and loadout setup is amazing if you're a solo player that wants to flawlessly complete master activities on your own. The requirement isn't too strict and it's easily optimizable for the character class and subclass of your choice, so in this video we're taking a look at one of the best starting loadouts to use for Witch Queen in the first few weeks of grinding your power level. This video is sponsored by Oea. They offer cheap Destiny 2 silver and you can get it even cheaper with my code DIVIDE for a discount when checking out. Now guys, before we jump into the video, Comment down below what your best loadout setup is that you'll be using next season. And while you're there, be sure to leave a rating, sub and share for more as it really helps me out. And now let's get into it. Now firstly the background gameplay here is a master loss sector while above the recommended power. But this setup will be one of the best ones to use when starting out and say for example, you're going into a master nightfall at 20 or 30 below the recommended power, then this setup will help you out a lot. Now starting with the subclasses, a hunter should be using the bottom tree gunslinger and the celestial nighthawk to have that extra damage against bosses because being underpowered, you're really going to need it. I wouldn't use void subclasses to start with as they are being changed, so you don't really know what to expect straight away, but if you really want to, you can use the bottom tree tether for the invisibility smoke bomb. For a warlock, you'll want to use the well of radiance middle tree with ideally a phoenix protocol so you can get that well straight back quicker. This will give you and your team a lot more survivability in the harder content while you're under leveled. But you can also run a stasis subclass with the eye of another weld exotic to freeze champions and bosses frequently, which will help out a lot when you don't have the best weapons or champion mods right away. As for the titan, I'd go with a thunder crash with curious of the fallen star. Now I will have a top 3 builds to use next season coming out on Sunday, so stay tuned for that video if you want to be fully prepared with a build setup for next season. Now for the loadout, you'll want Arbalest, then an energy auto rifle or an SMG to deal with overload champions. If you missed my best anti-champion weapons to get for season 16, then you can check out that video on my channel from the last week. But for your heavy, I'd go with a rocket launcher to start with and buff it using the Argent Ordnance mod. Now Arbalest will cover your anti-barrier champions and any match game shields, and then your energy will be your ad clearing weapon, as well as your anti overload or unstoppable weapons. Then lastly your heavy will be for DPS against champions and bosses. If you don't have Arbalest, mix your kinetic and energy weapons with an auto rifle, SMG, scout rifle and bows to cover all the champions. So for example a bow or scout rifle in the kinetic, then an SMG or auto in the energy, or the opposite. Now with Taken Charge being a little more useless with the orbs nerf coming, we'll need to work another way around it for becoming Charge of Light, so I'd suggest an Overcharge Wellmaker mod. This will spawn two Arc Elemental Wells when you use a finisher on an enemy, which is, let's face it, the easiest thing to do in the game. And heck, you could even run the Aeon's Exotic while finishing champions for infinite heavy ammo for your team if you want to. But these two Arc Wells spawned will be useful, as we will be using the Elemental Charge with it, so that we become charge light when picking them up. Now regardless of the subclass you're using, you'll get two stacks because there's two wells, but if you are using arc, then you'll get four stacks, which won't be any more useful unless you're running supercharge, which really isn't essential at this point. So the next three mods to slot on are three Argent Ordnance mods to make your rocket steal 35% more damage against enemies. Great with all rocket launchers, but even better if you're using Galahorn, which if you're playing with a team, then Arbalest isn't really essential, as you won't need everything covered on your own, as you'll have the entire team to help. If you're not using rockets, then instead swap one of the Argent Ordnance mods to a supercharged, another for stacks and stacks, if you're not using an arc subclass, and then the last one, replace it with a protective light for more survivability. One of the best mods in the game currently. So assuming you're using the initial setup I recommended, which is an Arbalest, an Energy Auto or SMG, and a Rocket Launcher, then your normal mods you'll want will be your Ammo Finder mod for your Heavy Weapon, then your Champion mods in your Gauntlets, either an Overload Auto or an Overload SMG, then your Reserve mod, your Scavenger mod, and then save your class mods for any new Seasonal Artifact mods you'll get when you're ready to use them, such as a Particle Deconstruction. From this point on, you'll start to make the adjustments to the build to suit around a new Seasonal meta, whichever that may be. I will have a new build video out during Witch Queen and Season 16, so stay tuned for those if you want to be fully prepared for endgame PvE and even day one raids, but guys, I've been divided with your recommended Season 16 loadout, and until my top 3 builds this Sunday, stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you soon. Bye. 